how's it going guys cody we're back again we're dropping yet another video right guys this video is a freestyle video uh as a former prisoner you guys know that i speak up for prisoners uh not all of them because i despise sex offenders as you guys may or may not know um and i want to do a video about why prison visits need to start sooner rather than later now the whole world is pretty much not the whole world let's nutshell it the uk right England, Wales specifically, right? Life has gone back to pretty much normal. Yes, we can't do a lot of things. Yes, that you can still go to the pub. You can still go on a night out. You can still go to a restaurant. Um, you can't go to sporting events and things like that. But like I said, most of life is slowly getting back to normal. I mean, in the next coming few days, gyms are going to reopen. Swimming pools are going to reopen, etc., etc. Um, prison visits have started slowly, uh, the, the, very slowly, too slow if you're asking me. Uh, prisons were one of the first things to lock down in the whole of England and Wales. Um, prisons were quick to lock down, didn't phase it, just full on lockdown. Uh, I sort of grasped the concept of it, like I said, I wasn't happy with it, but I grasped the basics uh, it's to protect prisoners and blah, 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 and staff and prisoners, families visits and prisoners, families and all that stuff, right? Um, but the thing is, what's annoying me is how long, right? So prisoners are not had visits for like four, like six, uh, sorry, 40, 16 weeks, 16 weeks, right? They've not had visits, right? Now that has a detrimental effect, not just on the prisoner that's suffering immeasurably behind his door, but also the prisoner's partner, the prisoner's children, that they're the silent victims in any crime. If you've got someone that goes to prison on remand or sentenced for their crime, the silent victims are the the partner, the family, the children. Like they suffer immeasurably, right? I know some people are going to win. Yes, the victim, the victim, Cody, the victim, right? Yes, the victim of the said crime. If there was a, if there was a said victim, I get that. Um, but like I've said, prisons were quick to lock down. Right? It took a month to roll out um, purple visits or video visits, whatever you want to call them. Um, again. A lot of prisons are not doing purple visits. Some of them are. Oh, you'll get 45 minutes to an hour a month. A month. It, it, it's not been quick enough. It's not been, like I said, it just shows how, how the prisoner in dark ages, right? I was on, um, I think three years ago, after I left prison, I was on the Victoria Derbyshire show talking about the importance of family ties whilst in prison. And I also spoke we, about this. Uh, there was a trial of Skype, one of the prisons, I believe, was HMP Park in South Wales. I believe it had been trialled in Northern Ireland as well. Um, nothing came of it. They didn't roll it out. Now, I said on the channel, I said, it should be used in conjunction with face-to-face -face visits. It should never replace face-to-face -face visits. And Lord Farmer himself states that prisoners who receive visits whilst in prison are 39% less likely to re-offend. Fast forward, 2020, we locked prisons down because of the coronavirus, highly contagious, highly deadly. You put it in prisons where you can't social distance. Uh, you put it in prisons that are, a lot of prisons are decrepit, they're run down, they're dilapidated, they've got vermin, cockroaches, mice and rats. Well, vermin is rats and mice, we know that. Anyway, um, and it's taken its toll on families, prisoners' families, prisoners' themselves and prisoners children's as well there, there are fathers growing up and mothers we've obviously got female offenders where their children are, are walking and talking for the first time and four months doesn't sound like a lot but in prison where the minutes feel like seconds feel like minutes the minutes feel like hours the hours feel like days the days feel like months the months feel like years the years feel like forever and so on and so forth you've got to think whilst prisoners have been rotting behind the door in 23 hours to 23 and a half hours a day solitary confinement because that's what it is right it has a detri detrimental effect on your mental health now the the, the every quarter figures are released about self-harm suicides things like that just imagine in the four months right since the lockdown just imagine the psychological toll physical toll psychological and emotional toll it's taken on prisoners massive Self-harm, guaranteed to be up massively, massively, right? Self-harm, suicide attempts, and sadly and tragically suicides, 
right? You can go to the pub and get pissed off your face, right? But you can't go, you can't go and visit your loved one. I know that it's slowly coming back. I know that certain pr there's 119 prisons in England and Wales, right? From secure training centres up to young offenders institutions to obviously adults and males, uh, adult males, and obviously training prisons. You've got your female offenders, uh, female prisons, category A to category D uh, in the male sector. We know this, right? But the thing is, there was it took a month to roll out video calls. They, they didn't do it because they wanted to do it. They did it because it's prisoners' human rights, right? And then now, they're slowly coming back to visit. And I mean slowly. And the thing is, if you've got a loved one in prison, you can look forward to a 45 to a one hour visit. Not a week, a month. Now, if you're on remand for an offence, ordinarily, you will be allowed one visit a day, Monday to Friday. Or one two hour block visit a week. Right? That's on remand, because you're not innocent of offence, you're not guilty of offence. A lot of those prisoners on remand will ultimately be found not guilty. A lot of them will be found guilty. We know this, right? Once you are convicted, you will be get you will get one visit a week, right? If you become enhanced, which means you've been good for not, you've not had an adjudication, not piss positive on a drug test, blah blah blah, for three months you become enhanced. Once you become enhanced, you get an extra visit a week. Uh, 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 sorry, a month, right? Um, so it's just just absolutely ridiculous. How can they say, oh, you get one visit? one visit a month for 45 minutes to an hour. It's, it's like they're antagonizing prisoners and I don't like it for one bit, right? Like I said, people might say, oh, Cody, it's better than nothing, right? But it's not, is it? It's a prisoner's human right. Like I said, I know we're living in exceptional circumstances and I know these are exceptional times, I get that. But the fact is, you can go to the pub, you and your family can go to the pub and get pissed up. Why can't prisoners see their children why can't their children and their partners see their husbands and wives we've obviously got female offenders for longer right well, there's certain things that are going to be rolled out when you go on the visit you can't physically touch them right how many prisoners do you think are going to break that law rule you walk out your missus is there tiny little tank top boobs are out cleavage is short she's got a great pair she wants to show them off to the world um comes on a visit you've got a, you've got a screen in front of you like a closed visit sort of scenario but in an open it's literally your normal seat in it i don't know if they're going on closed visits actually but i know that there's no physical contact the only way they could enforce that in my opinion is putting people on closed visits closed visits is a punishment visit for people that are caught smuggling contraband and stuff and then you're literally sat in a bubble now you know when you, have you ever seen an american film where like a prison film where you've got the the the, the thing your glass there and you talk through the glass that's the scenario that we're talking about can't touch the leg can't touch them it's a it's a shield so it's a perplex glass and then obviously your table and then perplex again you can't touch the individual right so they're going to have a zero contact clause right so the only way that that can really be enforced with prisoners right after four months of wanting to cuddle their missus hug the kids kiss the missus kiss the kids right is to put them on closed visits now i don't support that in any which way right At the end of the day these people are coming to the prison they're going to have their forehead zapped right hand sanitizer is going to be there so i'm hoping the visits take place in the visit in uh, room unless you're placed on closed visits like i said if i was placed on closed visits i would kick off because i'm, I'm not I'm not, I'm not guilty of a punishment why am i why am i on a punishment visit right like i said and the thing is if, you, if you're having your temperature check coming in right yes i know people oh cody cody what it is it's so that the, the the virus doesn't spread right but like i've said prisoners would gladly take that thing in. oh well then it'll come back and put someone else at risk i get that they're all like I said, you might see my argument as hollow. I see your argument as hollow. The, the, there are people on the right side of the tracks that want to brutalise prisoners and think, oh, Cody, well, they committed crime and, and, and part of the punishment is they can't see friends and family. Well, no, you can see friends and family. Like I said, it's a God-given right. It's a, it's a human right. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't buy into all this sort of rubbish, right, where, oh, Cody, they, they do the crime, do the time, and all this crap, what they say, right, don't do the crime, you can't do the time. Prisoners can do the time, trust me, right? But this, uh, like I said, it, why should the prisoner's partner and children be punished? They've not done anything wrong. So, like I said, it's something that needs to be sorted out and sorted out quick. Now, like I said, most people want to brutalise prisoners, give us bread and water, give us gruel, um, not let us see family and friends and everything, lock us up and throw away the key. There's one problem with that. 
Do you think that that's conducive to rehabilitation? No. Do you think that acts as a deterrent? No. If anything, that succeeds in demoralising, desensitising, dehumanising, and makes that prisoner even more disenfranchised than when they entered. That creates monsters, that creates more victims down the line. And if you look at the reoffending rates here in the UK, right, all those people that want to brutalise and demonise and punish prisoners, what you need to remember, number one, 99% of prisoners on less serving a whole life tariff are going to be reintroduced into society at some point. It's how we treat them whilst they are in the system, how, they would tr how we treat them whilst they are in the system, which will ultimately dictate and determine how they act upon release. So punishing them, demonising them, brutalising them, conditioning them, creates more victims down the line. Just look at the reoffending rates. It, it costs the taxpayer around £15 billion pounds a year in reoffending. Now, to all those goody two-shoes that have never done anything wrong in their lives and are whiter than white, right, that again want to brutalise and demonise and condition prisoners, let's hope that your friends and your family don't fall foul to one of these reoffenders that have been chewed up, brutalised in the system, and then kicked out with £46 pound, and then go back to crime. Let's hope it's not your loved ones that they attack, because that's the reality, right? Like I said, not necessarily attack, it could be a carjack, it could be a commercial burglary, it could be a dwelling, whatever the case may be. Brutalising prisoners creates monsters. That, that, the way that the current system is, the government have built the prison system here in the UK to break you in every conceivable way, imaginable. And people say, does prison work? Yes. Like I say, at demoralising, desensitising, dehumanising, and makes you even more disenfranchised than when you entered. The prison system is broken. And like I say, Lord Farmer, take me out of it. Think I'm talking rubbish. Take me out of it. Lord Farmer himself states, and this is a quote Prisoners who receive a support network and visits whilst in prison are 39% less likely to reoffend. Family ties should be, so, and that, that end quote. So family ties, what I'm saying to you, should be encouraged, right? Like I said, every prisoner should be in the nearest category prison to where they call home. Because you've got prisoners that are 200 miles away from where the missus is. The missus is, might not be working, she might be a full-time mum. Like I say, for being a full-time mum's a job in itself, right? They might not have the money because of how expensive the train is to get from A to, from Newcastle down to bloody Kent or something to go on a visit, right? Because mon because the financial restraints are massive. So every prisoner should be in the nearest category prison to where they call home. Like I said, when it comes down to cat A's and stuff like that, you're limited. There's only eight cat A's in the country. I get that. But like I said, in the nearest category prison, to where they call home. That's what should happen. Like I say, family ties should be encouraged, right? And all these prison accounts, right? There's Twitter accounts for these prisons, right? It's all propaganda, man. Oh, we're, we're doing this team thingy, Team Drake and Drake Hall and stuff. Oh, Team Drake Hall. And... No, all they do, prison Twitter accounts, it amounts to propaganda. They push the positives, which very few they have, and they suppress the negatives. Right. Like I said, the facts are that during this COVID-19 four month period where it's been complete lockdown for everybody, including you that sat at home, that's watching this. Right. These are like I say, they are unprecedented times. I get that completely. But like I've said, people have said, oh, well, staying at home is being like in prison. Don't come with that. Don't come with that for a second. Like I've said, You've got missuses, you've got partners, you've got prisoners will have prisoners in this time will have slashed up, threatened suicide, attempted suicide, or sadly and tragically committed suicide. You've got very there's a lot of prisoners that are in prison that are victims, are extremely being a victim has made them an offender. You might think, what do you mean? If you're if you if you commit a violent crime, but you was raised in a violent upbringing where you thought that violence was the right way to deal with things, and you and you was subject to extreme violence, and you become a violent person, are you a victim or are you an offender? Is it a violent person being violent, or is it someone that was a product of their environment that they can't they found something they can't control? And like I said, I'm not sticking up for it. I'm just trying to give you how my mind works with these things, right? So like I've said, people will have left prison in body bags because of family ties. Could have, right, in this four-month period, right, this is one thing that we need to address, right? Imagine that, right, when you go to prison, 
right? And it is part of the punishment. And I agree with this part. When you go to prison, right, you might be a controlling person. Men by design are more insecure than women. It's just a fact. We know this, right? So when you go to prison, you might be a controlling person. Now you can't check your bird's phone. You can't, you've not got a Facebook password. You're not checking a phone. You've not got a passcode for a phone and for a Facebook and a password and stuff like that. You can't check up on her. She might be going out on a night out, right? And your brain's going to be fried, right? You're in prison. You chose to make, commit a criminal act. We go to prison. And that's me being honest with you. Not everyone in prison is guilty, by the way. Miscarriages of justice, um, family. But like I say, miscarriages of justice, people on remand that will ultimately be found innocent. Some will be found guilty. We know this, right? So, yeah. But the strain that is put on a relationship when you go to prison is bam tight. Bam tight, right? Add into the mix four months, 16 weeks, right, without visits, Prisoners with paranoia, prisoners locked behind the door, solitary confinement, 23 to 23 and a half hours a day. Most dangerous thing in prison, your own mind. Not the damp, not the drugs, not the weapons, not the violence. Most dangerous thing in prison, your own mind. You start to think, you start to dwell, you start to overthink. When you're in prison, like having a magnifying glass times a million on your life, right? Which some of us have been victims before we've ever been offenders. You start to play movies in your mind. You start to think. You start to overthink. You start to overanalyze. You start to dwell. Dark clouds come in. You can contemplate suicide. I've been there. I've done it. So I get it, right? So this is the thing. So like I said, prisoners didn't create coronavirus, right? Think about the strain that it's put on a relationship over the last four months. The arguments... The paranoia, the jealousy. You understand? Now, like I said, people will be like, well, nothing's been open. People can still have house parties and people, blah, 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 and stuff. Prisoners' brains spiral out of control and they think the worst. We, they put women on pedestals, right? We do. I've done it. We put women on pedestals. If you put someone on a pedestal, you're never going to feel good enough, are you? Like I said, men are more insecure by design than women, right? Women are crazy. We can't live without them. We can't live with them. It's a crazy, crazy world. We get that. But there are so many, and prisoners' brains are just like, she's wasting her time with me. She can do better than me. I'm wasting time. I'm going to die in here. I'm going to be alive, off and all this. Feeling sorry for themselves. And a lot of prisoners, when they land in prison, they push their partner away because they know that the brain's going to go nuts, they start to think the most irrational things in prison. Irrational. There's a lot of loyal missuses out there. There's a lot of wives out there. There's a lot of girlfriends out there. A hell of a lot of them that are very, very, very in love with their man. They, they drive each other crazy, not fuck out of each other, but they love each other to death. And there's a lot of loyal women out there. You flip the coin, there's also a lot of bad women out there that play the game, they're sleeping with the boys' mates and all these bad stuff, right? And it goes on. And in prison... The, the, the guy is he's locked behind his door. He doesn't know what's happening outside his cell, outside his landing, outside the prison. Yeah, you can watch the news. Yeah, you might have mobile phones. But like I said, it's just the way that prison is. And prison creates monsters. And I've seen far too many relationships and family ties break down because of a prison sentence. The, I don't like the system winning. Right? You've got people that walk up. You've got missuses that walk away and think, I can't handle this shit. Nah, nah, nah. I'm not bringing the kids up no more. The kids are not coming up to see you in no jail. I'm moving. I'm getting up with you. I'm with your boy. The prisoner is in the prison. His thoughts are going round in his head. He's bubbling. He's bubbling. He's bubbling. Right? Prisoners lose the plot. Prison. Prison is psychological torture. Now we don't talk about this. We do the whole yeah yeah the whole macho thing about prison. Right? Anyone that's been to prison that that sits there and says yeah I haven't been down in prison, it hasn't got to me, I haven't got fucking angered or pissed off or family ties broke down or relationships broke down or I've uh, I've contemplated doing myself in or I smashed this up in, in, in anger. They're lying. Prison gets to us all, but we do, do because we're men and we've got to be men, can't do the, can't say that we we seen, we, we, we had a weak moment or a down moment. I can, I try to dispel the myth, I try to break it down. But the facts are, that family relationships will have broke down over the last four months. Relationships would have broke down over the last four months because of the paranoia, because of the jealousy, because of the utter lack of control that you've got. Like I said, some people will look at it and say, that's part of prison. That's what comes with a prison sentence. I agree with you to, to a certain extent. We have 
committed crime and you do read what you saw i get that but like i said the the prisoner's partner and the children they've done nothing wrong and the the, the, the this is the thing to put it in a soundbite about the importance of family ties whilst in prison i say it to you like this family ties whilst in prison can be the difference between life and death i genuinely believe that from my bottom of my heart to the top of my heart i believe that um, if you take away your support network for your loved one, what happens to that individual? And you might think, oh, no, he's strong. Some prisoners will, will survive. If you, if you cut ties with them, they'll survive. They'll be broken, but they'll survive. There's a lot of people, if you take that support network, bam, the reds have gone. And you literally fear that when you go behind your door, if that individual, if he's in a single cell, whatever, if he's going to do himself in, goes down that way. So anyone that's out there that's watching this video that's supporting somebody in prison, just know you're saving that individual's life. Now, a lot of people might think I'm talking rubbish. Take that support network away. Well, don't, but yeah, you, you see what I'm saying? Take that support network away and watch that person spiral. Depression, anxiety, dark clouds, depression, helplessness, fear feel like they've lost everything everything they've ever wanted in their life missus kids bam gone family and that goes for family ties as well when you're supporting someone in prison right it's the hardest thing to do you're watching your loved one go through the shit through the mire the roller coasters like this when you, when they're up the prisoner you're up when they're down you're down it's a roller coaster that is so unexplainable unless you've been there and done it. And I don't just mean prisoners. I When I first went to prison, I used to speak to the girl I was with at the time and my mum, and I'd be like, you don't know what I'm going through in here. The truth is, when you're supporting somebody in prison, you're strapped in, front car, front seat, bird's eye view for the whole thing. You are strapped in. And like I said, it can drive you do lally. It can, it can, it can literally... It can drive you up the wall. Prisoners can drive you up the wall. What comes with the prison sentence? The jealousy, the, like I say, the fear, the anger, the emotion, the, the helplessness, the fear. There's so many things that come with it, right? And when you're in prison, it just gets magnified. And we drive women mad. And not just women, obviously. We've got female offenders. They might have fellas and stuff like that. We, we, we talk about male offenders. We don't really talk about female offenders. I try to address female offenders as well. We drive you insane. We're hard work, but you know what? Our hearts are in the right places for a lot of the play, for a lot of the, for for most of it, right? We we're not just because we're in prison doesn't make us bad people. A lot of offenders before they've ever been offenders, they've first been victims. The quicker that visits start, the quicker prisoners will start to settle down a little bit. We'll still be nutty, we'll still be jealous, we'll still be possessive, we'll still be crazy, we'll still drive you up the wall. But we get to see, you'll get to see your missuses and you get to see your partners and your family and stuff like that. That there was, I read a story the other day where a woman's son, a woman's fellow went to prison and they've got a little young son and the young son's growing up and talking. The prisoner's missing some of the most important times of that child's life. That child ain't guilty of anything. The missus ain't guilty of anything. The only thing that the children, that the, the families of the prisoner, the girlfriend of the prisoner, or the husband of the prisoner, we've got female offenders, or the children are guilty of, is loving and supporting a loved one whilst in prison. Like I've alluded to before, Lord Farmer, Lord Farmer himself states, prisoners who receive visits whilst in prison are 39% less likely to reoffend. So in this four-month period, with this enforced lockdown, like I said, things have... They, they lock prisons off quick and we're one of the last to come back. We're one of the last. And like I said, prisoners want to see their families. And if it's in an open setting, you can think about how many prisoners are going to be told, you can't touch your missus, you can't touch your kids. They're going to say, yeah, fuck off. Going to be hugging the missus, trying to, trying to finger her, trying to stick a few fingers up, trying to, trying to thingy to her up, walking around with semis on and hard-ons and stuff because they've been looking at the missus' booth for the last 45 minutes. But 45 minutes in an hour is not enough. Not enough at all. Why can't they have one visit a week as per? Why? Like I said, why are these video calls? These video calls should not be scrapped. They should be used in conjunction with face-to-face -face visits consistently and across the board.
Anyway, guys, I've got nothing but love and respect for anybody out there that's supporting somebody in prison during the last four months or for the last however many years. Like I've said, the, the, the sad reality is there'll be people that will have topped themselves because they were scared about this virus, that the, the missus has left them, right? And the families might not have seen the individual for four months, three months, three and a half months, two months, three months. That They take their own life and they're in a cell, a 6x6 cell, uh, away from the loved ones, away from the family, in a squalid cell somewhere, and they've not seen the family for, for, for a few months, and they're leaving prison in a body bag. It's happened. If you're supporting somebody whilst in, they are in prison, you are literally saving that individual's life. It's as simple as that. Your support, your love. Like I said, when you're in prison, right, I think a lot of prisoners forget this. When you're in prison, you're sat there in your cell, you're doing what you're doing, you're getting about the wing, you're grafting, you're doing a bit, whatever. Your loved ones are running around. The, 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 they've got to wait by the phone. They've got to have the phone on 24 hours a day because if they miss your call, you're threatening them down the phone thinking that you're cheating with a dog, the you're cheating with me, mate, the, the, the dog, the postman, everything, you understand? Right. So you've got, you literally, there's people that panic if they miss a, a, a missed call from their loved one in prison. They've got to be by the phone. They're coming up on visits. They're putting up with your paranoid shit on the phone. Right? They're putting up with your shit through letters. You, they're emailing you nice pictures of the kids. You're sending them fucking shit back like that. Paranoid out of your mind. Right? It's a hard thing. It's one of the hardest things right, to support someone in prison. It's incredibly hard. Anyone that's been there and done it, right? Like I said, you're sat in prison. You've committed a crime. You're sat in prison. Your loved ones are on the out. It's them that are travelling the length and breadth of the country. It's them that are putting up with your shit on the phone. It's them that are sending you money off to you so you can top up your canteen and top up your phone or if you've got a mobile phone illegally, topping up your mobile phone, whatever. It's them that are coming on the visits and buying new food. It's them that's emotionally supporting you and keeping your head on your shoulders whilst you're thinking the worst of the worst. They deserve a lot of credit and a lot of applause they do because they're saving lives, supporting someone, putting up with the shit. It's the hardest thing in the world to do and they're ultimately saving lives. I genuinely believe that, guys. So my heart and my love and my respect goes out to anybody that is supporting somebody that's in prison. But let's get prisoners and their loved ones back on these visits, guys. Like I say... The thing is, though, if you're thinking about taking a partial in, don't do it because they're going to be they're going to be expecting it. Aren't they? Eyes and ears are going to be everywhere. They're going to be watching. Like I said, they might even put people on closed visits when they start to come back to visits. It's happening in a couple of a handful of prisons right now. It's going to get bigger, and hopefully, people can see the families more and more sooner, more frequently. It will save lives. It will put the prisoners' head on the shoulders. It will be a great uplift for the child that's forgetting who their fathers are and their mothers are because, obviously, female offenders. Uh, this is the importance, guys. This is why a crime-free life, a, cri a life of crime, is a, li a life of misery. I'm going to leave it there, guys. 28 minutes. Like, comment, subscribe. Cody out.